Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hannah and I'm filming in a different place today, a uh, slightly different angle. You can see my young adult shelves behind me and some plants. This is a brand new video concept on my channel. I don't know if this is going to be a regular thing, but I wanted to signify this new type of video by showing off a little bit of a different view of my room. So if you're new here, hi, I'm Hannah and I primarily talk about books on this channel, but today I'm going to be talking about a book and its movie adaptation. And that book is the wonderful classic, Passing by Nella Larson. And this is one of my favorite classics, probably of all time. Very short exploration of race and identity as told through the lens of a light-skinned black woman in the Harlem Renaissance 1920s era. So this book is about Claire and Irene, and Irene is our main character, and both Irene and Claire are light-skinned black women. Irene chooses to marry a dark-skinned man and live amongst her community as her black community, whereas Claire goes off, renounces her blackness, and marries a white man without telling him about her past, and lives as a white woman. And this is about the two of them meeting after many, many years and the tension caused by that dynamic. First, I'm going to be talking about this work as a book and then I will get into the 2021 movie adaptation and how it succeeds as an adaptation of a book. So I enjoy this book not only for its plot, I think the plot is really digestible for a classic and really, I mean, entertaining. Um, as a piece of literature, but it also has so many little pieces of nuance that upon each reading I get every time I read this book. This explores so much about the 20s idea of race and identity and community and what that means during the height of the Harlem Renaissance and what does it mean to pass? What is whiteness? What is blackness? And I'm not going to obviously speak on the blackness in this book, but I think this is a must read for white people to get an understanding of the evolution of race and racial identity throughout time. One of the reasons I enjoy this book so much is because of the tension in the story. We get so many hints of sinister, there's something sinister going on every time these two women meet up or any time Irene thinks about Claire, there's something off. There's something seductive about Claire's life and there's, they, each of the women want what the other has to some degree. The jealousy is real. So there's, there's great tension in this book and it, it makes you feel uneasy the entire time you're reading it. Almost like a, a thriller would. I wouldn't call this a thriller, but it has that same type of feel and unease about it, which is one of the reasons I think this is a very, so approachable from a plot standpoint. A huge theme of this book, not just the idea of passing and what it means to pass, pass as white, um, you know, the differences and similarities between Irene's passing versus Claire's passing. I think this idea of wanting and having and being unsatisfied with your life is such a huge theme of this book because in some ways both women are exactly the same in their desires, but they choose to go about it in different ways. Um, in my opinion, I think Irene is just as manipulative as Claire is, whereas Claire has outright, outright lied to her husband. Um, Irene has manipulated her husband as well. There are 
discussions about her husband and how unhappy he is living in New York and how he wants to go away and take their boys out of the country to live, she talks about how she manipulated him into staying for her. And, you know, there's not only Irene and Claire's wanting, but also Brian, who is Irene's husband, his desires and his wants um, as well. Along with this idea of wanting or desire is this sense of fear that both women have. So in some ways, Irene is more fearful for her position than Claire is. Claire almost wants to be found out by her husband because if she's found out by him, she can basically divorce him and do whatever she wants and rejoin the black community. And that threatens Irene's position because Irene feels that Claire is eclipsing her and possibly stealing her husband, even though she has no proof. Obviously, I'm not going to spoil the plot of what happens in this book, but this idea of fear versus desire and wanting adds some of the most beautiful and intense tension in passing. And interestingly enough, the ending is very open-ended. It's kind of unclear as to what exactly happened, and I think that perfectly encapsula encapsulates the themes of this book. Overall, I find passing a not only an interesting read in terms of theme and concept and exploration, but also as a plot in itself, I find it incredibly entertaining. So for me, this is a five out of five star read. I highly recommend it. And it's very short and easily digestible. Now, let us talk about the 2021 movie adaptation starring Tessa Thompson and Ruth Nagy? Is that how you say her name? Naga? I, I have no idea. This is a really interesting movie and forgive me because normally I talk about books on this channel. I have very little experience talking about movies in any meaningful way. So take everything that I say with a grain of salt, clearly. So I got my notes here. Let's get into it. As far as adaptation go, adaptations go, I think this takes the book and translates every single scene <laughs> well. As an adaptation, I find it almost word for word, <laughs> uh, plot-wise, exactly what the book is, is. So if you have never read the book and you watch the film on Netflix, you will understand what is going on. I think it's really interesting how this movie is shot in black and white um, and I think that only enhances the themes of race and passing and racial identity because it kind of provides a, a you know one note color palette for the entire film which I think is an interesting choice with this particular story and the themes that it dis explores. There are obviously some scenes and some dialogue that have been added to enhance the story, um, but I think in a way that makes sense, in my opinion. So for example, I don't think Irene's children get any dialogue in the book, or very little dialogue in the book, and there are some scenes of the children uh, in the movie. And I think that was a good choice because uh, the children are part of Irene's and Brian's uh, marital struggles, if you will. Uh, an interesting realization that I had that I didn't really pick up in the book until I watched the movie is there is a scene towards the end, not to spoil it, involving a tea party. And Irene is walking around filling tea for all of her guests and something happens. And the symbolism of that scene and what Irene says in that moment 
becomes so starkly obvious if you know the ending of the film. I'm being pretty vague here, but again, I don't want to spoil it, but that symbolism and seeing that visual was really interesting and really eye-opening for me because I've read the book twice now and didn't really understand the significance of that moment until I visually saw it. One note of criticism I have is I felt that this movie was incredibly quiet so obviously this book has a lot of internal struggle that's like the majority of this plot is Irene's mental back and forth her her monologuing and discussions with her friends and her family that's the plot so the movie ends up being incredibly quiet because there are so many scenes of Irene laying in bed staring out the window, staring at the ceiling, not doing anything in particular. And the music in this film is not played during scenes. It is only played during transitional moments and it's all jazz music. And the jazz music fits the time period, in my opinion, obviously during the Harlem Renaissance, the booming jazz age, it but it didn't the music is tonally the same across the board so in my opinion what would have i think enhanced the storytelling of the visual medium was to have the music reflect the tone of the story because as the story goes on irene becomes more and more desperate and more and more fearful yet the, the music is upbeat and light and happy the entire time and only played during transition scenes. So we don't, the, the music in my opinion doesn't enhance the scenes. And I think we could have understood Irene's internal struggles a little bit more if the music had been a little bit more reflective of her mood if that makes sense. The reason I'm nitpicking is because I played, I was a musician for m many, many years. So that was just something that stuck out to me personally. If you are a fan of drama, of dramatic films, I think this probably fits into that category. And as a person who doesn't necessarily watch that many films in this vein, um, maybe I'm just not as familiar with the, the storytelling methods and the music methods of this work. I think an issue with this story in general, while converting it from the book to the screen, is that it is so internal and there isn't much visual. So I think the directors and, and you know people behind this film already had kind of an uphill battle when adapting this, because like I said earlier, this is just Irene thinking a lot and having conversations. And so obviously the conversations are easy to portray. However, the only way to show Irene's internal struggle is her just sitting there and we don't hear everything that she is thinking, which I think is a little bit of a downside in terms of like movie enjoyment. Overall, I did enjoy the movie, I would say the book in my opinion is more nuanced and is a better way to consume the story because of that internal conflict that you get to see in the book however i think the performances were great the casting was great the the costumes the the setting the the backdrops everything was so beautiful it was so well done in in that way so they did such a good job with the source material and i do think it is a pretty good adaptation so however you choose to uh consume this story i would say you know at your discretion choose whichever you see fit but i would recommend the book so as not to misunderstand what's the main conflict is um, and to pick up on the nuance of the themes and symbolism.
if that makes sense. So I have no idea how to rate films. If if I were, maybe I would get a, like a, a a six out of ten as an adaptation of a book, and maybe like a seven out of ten in terms of a movie in its own right. I don't know, is that fair? <laughs> anyway, I hope this video isn't too awkward. This is a little bit of a different type of video for me. I'm trying to branch out and create different types of videos on my channel. So I really hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you can forgive my lack of nuanced language in some areas when discussing film. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you're interested in reading or watching the film. I would love to have a discussion with you in the comments down below. Bye everyone.